Hey, how's it going everyone? Entropy here today with another video. Today, I want to cover something that's very new and very interesting to me. Um, and I'd like to just explain my take on it and kind of analyze what kind of uh, things that we could possibly expect coming into the future after the current birthday event, which is the Tetsu one. So for those of you who may not know, this is not actually the first one to come to Vanguard Zero. Of course, in previous uh, birthdays, we have the cake, right? it's like a My Room accessory, and that's basically about it. And a title, I guess, Happy Birthday Corin or Happy Birthday Aichi or, or, or whatever, doesn't really affect gameplay. But with the Tetsu one coming to both Global and JP, we are seeing a shift in the actual gameplay. We are seeing new gacha options. We are seeing new opportunities to get these cards uh, from these respective clans when we didn't expect a clan banner or or any support for these clans in the um, in the in the next few weeks or the next few days or the near future. In any case, so I guess to start off this video, we should go to the first actual birthday gacha that is the Ren birthday. So this one actually came out with the anniversary on uh, December 12th for JP. Um, and for this gacha, it basically works as the same as the Tetsu one for those uh, uh, those global players who may not know. You can only roll up to four times and then you use these medals that you get to exchange for either the Ren icon or the Fukuhara Kocho, the uh, Fukuhara High School uh, title. And uh, they're both really neat, uh, but primarily you're, if you are aiming for Shadow Paladin units, that was really, really hot back then. Um, and this is set 13, mind you. So Revengers was still, you know, unanimously deemed a tier one by, by JP tier lists. Um, this was a really great way for people that might have missed off some stuff from such wolf, have a bit more time, and then still get a shot at getting Shadow Paladin units. So this was a great opportunity for players um, back then. Uh, and it was a really nice way to just, you know, get some units and just, it's just unexpected to say the least. It's unexpected because there was already so much going on in the anniversary. So personally, I didn't really think much about this, you know, if it was, you know, like there, there was another character's birthday, uh, probably by now it's been like two months, really, uh, we should have seen one again, but apparently Tetsu gets one. So let's talk about Tetsu. So Tetsu just got one um, today, if you were watching this video, um, at the day it's released. Uh, for JP, it was the day before, because time zones are a thing. And we still get the cake as usual uh, for free, but we also get the Dark Regular Sketch. So this is for JP and Global, but there are some slight differences. So let's let's just cover that really quickly. Um. First of all, the JP one, uh, JP has the Ren one exclusively uh, for the Dark Irregulars one. For the Tetsu one, it's for JP and Global. Um, you still can exchange for the same titles. Uh, you can still exchange for the same icons. The title, I think, is slightly different because in Japanese, it's not Team Asteroid. They, they, they call it AL4. I am not too sure about the title, but aesthetically, I guess there is a small difference. That, that's not the main point of this video. It's about gameplay, right? Um, but the contents of the gacha is very different. So the Tetsu one for JP, JP at this point is at set 15. So they would have seen set 13 stuff for Dr. Regular. So that includes um, the Ammon package, Ammon Reverse. You have the Break Ride stuff. Um, you have a lot of different stuff that uh, Global definitely won't see yet because Global is still at the set 12 meta. So even then, even then, even though Global is missing some of the, the hot pieces for Darker Regulars, um, that is making DIs perform really, really well in the JP meta for the last few sets. Global still got it. Global still got it. Global still had the uh, gacha. And to my understanding, it's less diluted. Um, it, it only has four triple rares in the global gacha. And you can still pick up your Rages, you can still pick up your Chariots. Um, both are going to be really, really key cards moving into set 13, if you are interested in playing DIs. So I think this is actually a really great opportunity, and it really highlights the difference between the global um, experience, the global experience that they, they really are trying to move forward to, and I, and I really think it's a great thing. Because they could easily just skip it, like the, um, the Ren Gacha from the anniversary, from two months ago, they could easily skip it, because, well... Global didn't have the revenue stuff yet. You know, what's the point? Um, but 
you know, there, there is a point. There, there are stuff that you need from previous sets that you really, really need into set 13. And this is honestly the best chance to pick these up. Why? Because other than this birthday gacha, if you want your Regis or your Chariots, you have to go back to the Asia Circuit Legacy sets, right? Like the, the Fate or Destiny, those don't have medals. The rates of getting a Regis is like so, uh, so ridiculously low. It's such a waste of gems. It's such a waste of packs. You might as well just spend those gems in like crafting material and, and just go do that instead. It's, it's ridiculous. So all in all, this is a great thing. I think it's a great thing. Of course, Global doesn't have the sub 13 stuff yet, but Global will have that soon. And, and it, you can argue that it might be better because well, Global has, has a better chance of getting stuff like Reiji um, at this moment. Uh, for JP players that needs to just catch up on some DI stuff, you can still do that. So I think the birthday gachas are really, really timely, surprisingly. You know, they are obscurely, like, they, they are rigid in the sense that they are, you know, you have to wait for the birthday, but it actually works in this game. It actually works. And, and that, that's what I'm really surprised with. So um, with that said, what can we expect in the future, right? Like, let, let's, let's, let's talk about the birthdays between Ren and Tetsu that we kind of skimmed over and see if there are any reasons why they skipped it. So first of all, we have Sosuke, Waka, Mizu, we have Olivier, Galliad, Ryuzyu, Mujin, Rin, Hashima, Koji, Ibuki, Yuchiro, Kanzaki, or Dio, man. Um, all of these characters are not in the game yet. So of course, uh, Sosuke, uh, he was in the, in the, in the, in the G era. You have uh, Galliad playing Gold Paladin in um, the Legion era. Ryuzu uh, clan literally doesn't exist yet, so can't really do a clan banner like that, right? Uh, Rin, Angel Feather player, but Jiera, Koji Ibuki, Link Joker, but, you know, again, not in the story yet. And Kanzaki, Shadow Paladin, but not in the story yet. So here we kind of see like a, a small maybe trend, like clearly they only want to do characters that are in game already. And it absolutely makes sense because you'd confuse people that don't really follow um, Vanguard outside of Vanguard Zero. <laughs> so absolutely it makes sense. Um, and also if, if the clan doesn't exist, you can't really do a banner on it, right? Um, we also have Luna, Luna and Averno. So playing Pale Moon and Genesis respectively, again, their clans are there, but their characters aren't yet, so we will have to wait and see, um, and see what they'll do in the future. Next, we have Shin, Shinemon Nita, and Shingo Komui. Now, these two are more interesting cases, I think. Definitely both are technically in the story for Zero. Uh, for Shin, he's not really a playable character yet, which, you know, could, could play a role. Um, he plays in the original timeline, in the Zero timeline because Zero is based on the original anime, he plays uh, Nubatama. And uh, Nubatama is, oh, sorry, Mirakumo. Mirakumo? One of the ninja clans, and it, basically it is an event clan. <laughs> uh, and then Shingo. Shingo is also, um, well, he plays a bunch of clans in the anime, but primarily he's known for playing Mirakumo, um, both of which are event clans. And to give event clans specific banners could be a bit too broken question mark maybe they didn't want to do that yet because well then why would you do the event in the first place so maybe that's why i'd like to hear your thoughts um yeah i mean shin also plays genesis in the uh, reboot timeline with v series so maybe by the time we get to v series in zero maybe we'll get the shin birthday gacha who knows but that's like a long long time down the line so we'll have more other um, experiences to to validate or to support this argument in the future. Um, and next up, the hardest one to justify is Charlene and Jillian, the uh, Aqua Four sisters, the, uh, the so from the Soryu clan. Um, they both had the birthday right after Ren. Maybe that's why. Maybe they just didn't want two clan or birthday gadgets back to back. Maybe it's because they're not the main users, right? Maybe it's just because, well. Even in game, when you go into character fight, you will see that the main user for Aqua Force is is uh, Leon. Leon. So uh, maybe it would have been better to celebrate Leon's birthday with the Aqua Force gacha and not the Jillian and Charlene, the twins, instead. Um, and you can argue that this also kind of makes sense because they don't want to like um, have too many uh, 
clan banners for specific clans or like specific characters just because more characters play that clan um maybe it, it's a main character problem um <laughs> and you really have to wait for the main user to show up before you get one so that could be interesting um to see what what else we can expect in the future but yeah so basically from starting from you know charlene and jillian all the way to to some of the gr characters you, you don't really see birthday gadgets for them um another another thing that we can talk about is clan banners and if they clash with birthday banners um uh, personally i don't think they will maybe birthday banners will replace clan banners but we will have to see we will have to see but at the moment from such wolf we just had a shadow paladin revengers raid up uh the black rings uh raid up uh in jp and then they also had a link joker raid up uh, but that that didn't really shy them away from doing Ren's birthday the month after, like literally a couple weeks after, like two three weeks after. So we could or you could argue that maybe birthday gadgets are replacing clan banners, maybe. Um, but personally, I don't really like that. I don't really agree with that because, well, um, I think that birthday gadgets are just like a birthday thing and it's a completely separate kind of idea with the clan banners clan banners you can roll as many times as you want birthday gadgets you can only roll four times it's mainly to celebrate the clan and the characters uh the main characters that are involved um is my interpretation but um what are your take well, what's your take because well it's kind of abrupt um that we just got a birthday gacha on uh, for set 13 when we just had a clan rate up in set 12 and since I mean, between the birthday catch-up for Ren and between the birthday catch-up for Tetsu, we have not seen a single clan banner uh, reappear in JP. So that's just an interesting observation. I'm not making any conclusions, but just putting it out there, maybe this is a possibility. And last but not least, if we uh, assume that it has to be a character that exists, it has to be a character that represents the clan according to the character fights, which clan will be next or which character will be well which character banner will we get next i i think it could be rekka it could be rekka in in six days as of the recording of this video um, on february 21st so she is well an angel feather player um you have some support for angel feathers in the in the well recently for both global and jp um you you have her as the main user of the clan. The only question is if it's too soon. Um, and really, at the end of the day, this is all speculation. We don't know what Game Studio has planned. But it's still interesting to, to maybe make a guess and see what happens. Um, I'd be really interested to see where they go with birthday events because they have been putting a lot of work into it, right? At first, it's just a random-ass cake, like nobody really cares about i guess if you like that character you would put it in your room and you celebrate it i know i did once upon a time i just got rid of it because at that point at a certain point you just have like a dozen cakes and it doesn't really look that aesthetically pleasing um you have titles to celebrate the character that you simp uh, which is great but having actual gameplay implications is is you know i think it is much more well, important to discuss because well if there are more opportunities to pull certain clans at certain timings it could really affect the way the meta goes for jp and global right there's only so many resources if you're a free to play player and if you can kind of you know guess and uh, maybe make some assumptions and prepare for these birthday catches the same way you prepare for certain clan manners and stuff like that it could really shift the popularity of certain clans and how how Frequently, you will see certain clans matched up in the in the in the ladder. So that is basically it. I just wanted to discuss what my thoughts on the birthday catches are overall. I think it's a really good thing because more options is always good options, right? You can always choose to not take those options. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of people that wanted to step into DI because they saw how great Reggie is, and they just don't really have a good shot because. Well, the only banner you can get Reiji in or Chariot stuff is the Legacy banner. And, you know, voila, Global got the Tetsu banner, which is amazing. It's a great way 
to incentivize sales. It's a great way to get people to play new stuff, play a unique clan like Dark and Regulars that honestly isn't really that popular. And overall, I think it's a, it's a great thing. It promotes their game, promotes their characters, and um, promotes more variability in gameplay. So overall, really happy about this. Uh, what are your what's your take on this? You know, or do you agree disagree with some of the assumptions or speculation that I've made? Really interesting to hear what your thoughts are. Comment down below. Let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, go go give it a like. Um, if you didn't, you know, give it a dislike. It. it I mean, I appreciate it. Um, I know some people. I know some people might feel rude for providing criticism. For, for videos like these, but I personally think that if you were if you were adamant enough or you care enough to dislike the video and, and let me know what's wrong, it actually helps. It helps you get better content and it helps me make better content, right? So I think that's a really important thing. Um, don't be shy. I think it's just important to voice out your opinions because after all, um, you know, it you know, your opinion is very valuable. Okay. So, um, yeah. And if you want to stick around and hear more of my thoughts or more news or, or gameplay or whatever, subscribe if you haven't already. So you will get uh, up to date with whatever content is to come. So that's basically it for today. Uh, hope you all have a great week. If you are playing global, great end of season. If you are playing JP, great beginning of season. So hope you all work hard for the next Ranked reward coming soon, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.